Yeah, so uh, I want to uh, go back to where we left off uh, yesterday, and uh, well, and uh, again, again, you are ask, you are free to ask me uh, uh, ask me questions, and uh, so, so please stop me whenever you want to ask a question. So, um, so now uh, uh, I want to uh, give a formula for the hemisphere partition function. But uh, uh, yesterday, actually, I uh, had typos, which uh, Bruno uh, pointed out. So I want to uh, correct. So the, the mistake, the typo was in the formula for the one-loop determinant. Uh, so the vector contribution was fine. So there is a, some, a product of uh, positive roots. And uh, OK. And sine phi alpha sigma. So this is a vector contribution. Oh, and uh, so here, sigma is meant to be minus i times L times sigma 2. Now, uh, there is a contribution from uh, the chiral multiplets obeying the Neumann boundary conditions. So by, by NOI, I mean the set of irreducible representations uh, of chiral multiplets that obey the Neumann boundary conditions. Then there is a product over uh, the weights in the representation. Now the argument is W times sigma. Our sigma is, is given there. And uh, yeah, so here is the correction. So the argument in, in the current convention, in the convention of this, of this lecture, uh, it should be q, uh, q over 2. Right? And the sign, sign is opposite from uh, the convention of my paper, actually. Uh, OK. And then similarly for the Dirichlet boundary condition, so by dir I mean the uh, set of uh, irreducible representations for with uh, Dirichlet boundary condition, and there is a similar product. And uh, as I explained yesterday, there is minus two pi i e to the uh, pi i w sigma plus Q over 2. So again, okay, this again, correction. And uh, gamma 1 minus W sigma minus Q over 2. So correction. Yeah, and uh, well, if you have twisted mass, You are supposed to uh, replace. Okay, what did I say? Uh, okay, so W sigma to W sigma plus M A. Okay, with a suitable definition of M A. Okay, so so this is a, a one loop contribution, and I want to denote by uh, script B the correct correct be the data necessary to specify the uh, B, v, B brain B, B, B brain so okay so the noise and there I explained uh, V is a champaton a champaton vector space a row is a uh, representation of the gauge group and the flavor group carried by the Champaton space. R star is a representation uh, of the R symmetry group. And, uh, and Q is a matrix factorization. So this is uh, what, I, what <coughs> we call boundary data. And it corresponds to B brain.
And now, I, okay, I'm going to write the formula for the hemisphere partition function. So, okay, so gauge group is G. And uh, hemisphere partition function, which depends on the boundary data. Okay, boundary data and, and also the, uh, also it depends holomorphically on the uh, twist complex wide FI parameter, T. I think I wrote 2 pi xi, xi minus i theta, okay, topological. Uh, uh, so, so this is given as one over the size of the wire group of the gauge group. So for U n, this would be n factorial, and uh, there is a U uh, j oh um, integral d so rank g this is the rank of the gauge group and sigma uh, two pi i raised to the power rank of G. And uh, now I'm going to, uh, as a contour, I, I just simply write the most naive one. OK. So, so this is just the imaginary axis raised to the power, uh, the rank of the gauge group. And uh, this is, this is what, what you get from the uh, boundary condition for on the vector multiplet I described yesterday. And actually, um, depending on the representations, rho and r star carried by the Champeton space, you, you may need to, uh, and also uh, depending on the twisted masses, I guess, uh, you may need to uh, choose, uh, you may need to impose a more refined boundary condition on the vector multiplet. Um, and one way to think about it is uh, the following. So the vector multiplet, from the vector multiplet, you can construct a twisted chiral multiplet, which is sort of mirror to the chiral multiplet. And then uh, in order to preserve B type, uh, type supersymmetry, you need to choose a Lagrangian submanifold on the space of uh, sigma 1 and sigma 2. So, so, so more generally, this uh, imaginary axis raised to the power Rk times G, R, uh, rank of G, should be replaced by some Lagrangian, appropriate Lagrangian submanifold, which I, uh, yeah, which is uh, almost of this form, but uh, it, mi it might get tilted uh, in some directions. Uh, so Lagrangian, so Lagrangian with respect to, to the well, naive symplectic, uh, symplectic structure on sigma one and sigma two, just as a flat space. I mean, d, d sigma 1 with d sigma 2. Yeah. Uh, okay, so, and yesterday I evaluated the uh, classical contribution. So, okay, t times, okay, I think for UN I, I wrote t times trace of sigma, but okay, um, in, in the general case, let, let me write it just uh, t times sigma. And in general, in general, the the, the, uh, twisted, uh, the complex wide FI parameter gets uh, renormalized, so uh, we need to use a renormalized one. I, this okay, probably Benini discussed this, so uh, you can you probably remember it. From and then uh, here as a, as part of a classical contribution, we have a super trace uh, in Champeton space e to the minus two pi i sigma and and then okay there is this important okay one loop factor yeah it's, it's that so this is a formula uh, so so okay this is uh, basically the the main result uh, for for my talk so far uh, is there any question Okay, then let, let, let me continue. Okay.
Now, so th then, then you can ask, uh, okay, what is the hemisphere function function good for? What's the meaning? And one meaning uh, is the following. So this is a uh, this was a conjecture uh, put forward in a paper, and also Hori and Romo. Uh, okay, and this is for, for CFT. So I mean, in, in the case, uh, okay, I, think I didn't explain the Calabria condition, but uh, uh, for, for example, for the so if the gauge group is abelian, so if the gauge group is a product of U1, then the sum of gauge charges has to be zero. Uh, uh, for the actual R symmetry to be preserved, and in that case, it is and in at least uh, in some region of the FI parameter, it is believed that the gauge theory flows to a nonlinear sigma model whose target space is a Calabria manifold, and uh, therefore the theory would become uh, the theory is believed to become a conformal. And in that case, uh, our con conjecture says that the Hemsia-Pachon function is the unnormal unnormalized. This was implicit in our paper, in, in the papers, but unnormalized version of central charge. Over D brain, well, over the D brain, yeah, over the D brain. Maybe I should say the D, the D brain. Um, well, in in string theory, uh, you can use uh, uh, B brain boundary condition or or B brain data uh, uh, to describe a D, D brain in in the in a comp Supersymmetric well, in a compact compactification of type two uh, super string theory to lower dimensions like four dimensions. So, for example, you, you can you can you can uh, have a Calabriau. Yeah, typically, you can have a Calabriau. You, you have a Calabriau compactification, and uh, you consider uh, homoric uh, brains or uh, sheaves or derived yeah derived object in the derived category of coherent sheaves uh, and so on. And uh, then, so anyway, so if you have a D brain inside the Calabria, then you get uh, a particle, right? You get a particle in a lower dimensional theory, like in four dimensions. And if you, for example, start with uh, type, two, type two string theory, you get um, N equals two uh, super gravity theory. And uh, and you have particle and uh, in in four dimensional n equals two super algebra uh, you have a central charge uh, you have a central charge in the uh, super algebra and and, uh, and this is the central charge that appears in the uh, four dimensional n equals two uh, super algebra. Good, um, but uh, but uh, yeah, but the central charge of the brain actually so there is a more intrinsic definition in terms of a two-dimensional CFT, well, uh, n equals 2, two uh, super conformal field theory. And this is given by the partition function on an infinitely long uh, sort of, okay, cigar. Okay, I think they, they call it cigar. So, so this, is a, this is a cap. This is a sort of hemisphere. And there is a flat region and there is a boundary. Okay, so and uh, the length is meant to be infinite. You and, and you, you you consider uh, here a twist in the capped region. You, you might call it the TT star amplitude, topological anti-topological amplitude. And uh, yeah, yesterday actually there, there was a question about uh, how to go to. Uh, CFT, right? Uh, so, so, so this boundary condition indeed uh, describes a well, defines a boundary state, and because the length here is infinite, the state created by by this uh, hemisphere region is uh, uh, is projected to to the ground state. So uh, this yeah, the hem the partial function on this geometry. Which is which is uh, which is uh, 
a priori different from the Hamiltonian function I described. Uh, this, this does compute. Well, then this does compute the overlap between the Ramon, Ramon ground state and the uh, B brain uh, boundary state. So the equality here is a, was a conjecture. And uh, the, the conjecture was uh, based on the explicit calculations and uh, no, uh, no e comparison with no examples. And I say unnormalized because uh, in order to really get the central charge of the D-brain, uh, we need to normalize by the sphere partition function, computed, computed using the same renormalization procedure. So the same regularization, the same uh, counter terms. Uh, okay. And then this conjecture was actually proved. I, I mentioned this already yesterday. This was proved by Bacchus and Plenkner. Uh, using a super wide anomaly. Okay, so so in the CFT case, the meaning of the Hamiltonian function is, is now clear. <coughs> oh, by, by the way, um, it so, so Hamiltonian function function and compute the unnormalized uh, central charge, and uh, often it is uh, good enough because uh, typically what you want to use the uh, central charge is to compare the stability, to, to study the stability of D-brains. And then uh, wh what you need, what you really need is a uh, uh, relative, uh, uh, yeah, the, re the relative, well, what really important is the relative phase. And uh, uh, of course also the, uh, the, the, the ratio of the absolute value is also well, important because it, uh, from, from that you compare uh, uh, you can compare which particle is more, is more massive, uh, which particle is more is lighter, uh, and so on. But uh, so anyway, uh, um, this uh, unnormalized uh, central charge is is already uh, very useful information. The quantity on the right hand side was computed from CFT. Uh, this one? Yeah. Yes, this is computed from CFT. Yeah, that's right. Uh, but yeah, but actually this quantity can also be defined uh, in massive theory, so in non-conformal non theory, and uh, this is something I, I was trying to uh, mention. So, um, so, you, so you can ask, uh, what's the relation between the hemisphere partition function and uh, this quantity in the non-conformal case? And in that case, there is a conjecture uh, by Cecotti, Gaiot, and Waffer, uh, based on, uh, on a computation in an explicit example, which says that the hemisphere action function is a limit of the, this quantity, T star amplitude, where the anti hormonic part of the mass, mass parameter is set to zero, but the hormonic part of the uh, mass, mass parameter is uh, kept finite. So, so but, but it's uh, I believe it's, it's still a conjecture. There is no proof. OK, any question? OK. Now I want to discuss a uh, very explicit, probably the most important example. Uh, so which is a uh, uh, Carabia hypersurface in the uh, Projective space. Yes. When you say non-conformal case, yes. do you mean a mass deformation of a CFT or a general, uh, more general setting? Uh, I think uh, more general setting, but yeah, okay. yeah. But in that case, uh, li like for example, the the projective space. But on the other hand, then. It's not clear, really clear what, what, what it means to set the mass parameter to zero, I guess. So, yeah, okay. The, the, the conjecture, I think, uh, can be, more, at least more, the con con conjecture can be straightforwardly formulated for massive deformation of CFT. 
Yeah, the example they had was uh, yeah, massive uh, Landau Ginzburg model. <coughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, so uh, I want to discuss an example, which is, uh, uh, okay, Karabiao hyper surface in projective space P and minus one. Hmm. Yeah, so this is important. So if n is three, this, uh, the space is torus, so elliptic curve. If is n is four, this is K3 surface, okay, polarized K3 surface. Uh, if n is five, this is a quintic carabial. So you see that this is an uh, important example. And uh, the gauge theory uh, for this carabial is uh, described by uh, uh, gauge group. Uh, Yeah, so that's uh, the surface described by gauge theory with gauge group U1 and uh, N chiral multiplets, uh, which I denote mm -hmm. by phi i and uh, 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 one chiral multiplet, which uh, people usually denote by P. And uh, okay, gauge charge. is uh, here it's plus one and uh, here minus n. So they sum up to, the gauge charge is sum up to zero. So it's that's why the Calabria conditions I mentioned. Okay, and uh, okay, uh, I omit specifying the R charges. Hmm. And the uh, super potential is uh, P times uh, polynomial in phi, which is meant uh, assumed to be homogeneous of degree n. And you probably know that, uh, yeah, for positive fi parameter, uh, the theory flows to uh, nonlinear sigma model whose target space is the Calabria. And I want to, now I want to uh, give you a matrix factorization for the, basically the D6 brain. In other words, uh, the structure shift of the Karabiao, maybe with some fluxes turned on. So, um, so choose uh, the boundary condition, condition so that all chiral fields uh, obey the Neumann boundary condition. So, in my notation, this means that uh, noi is, is, okay, noi is, sorry, everything and there is empty. And uh, let us introduce fermionic oscillators. Well, in the context of uh, matrix factorization or uh, uh, algebraic geometry, this construction is known as, okay, I don't know, act, actually I don't know how to know, how to pronounce this, but Kozu, I, I, I say Kozu. Kozu construction. Okay, I, I'm in Europe, so, so somebody is going to explain how to pronounce it. Okay. And so, so, uh, we introduce fermionic oscillators like this, and eta and eta bar square to zero, and uh, choose a, a Clifford vacuum. Wait, yeah, so Clifford vacuum such that okay, eta annihilates the vacuum. Okay, so then uh, at Champeton space, we, we get a two-dimensional space, so uh, spanned by the vacuum and, uh, well, and uh, 
uh, this excited state. Okay. Um, and then uh, as matrix factorization, let us consider G times eta plus P times eta bar. Right. Then it's I think it's easy to see that uh, this is uh, P times G N. So uh, this is a superpotential or times the identity of it. Okay, good. Uh, and uh, then, then you can assign uh, appropriate uh, gauge and uh, R charges so that the, uh, the conditions on the matrix factorization I described yesterday uh, are satisfied. Now I want to compute the. Oh, but oh, but I think, but uh, I, but in order to really uh, complete the specification of matrix factorization, I need to choose uh, the gauge charges, the, the gauge charge and the asymmetry charge of the vacuum. So, yeah, let me choose. Uh, the gate charge of the vacuum to be um, little n plus capital N over 2, where little n is an integer. And uh, let me assume that uh, the R, R charge of the vacuum is 0. Then you can come, then, okay, then the claim of Herb's. Actually, okay, okay, sorry. The, the claim, uh, okay, I, I don't know who found this originally, so uh, I, I cannot give you the original reference, but the claim is that this describes, the matrix factorization uh, describes the, the shift, or we could say the line bundle, uh, O, this O, O M of N, over the Calabria hypersurface M. So N equals zero corresponds to the structure shift. And uh, we, for non-zero N, uh, this, this shift is a uh, um, structure shift uh, twisted by a line bundle, uh, by some line bundle which comes from the projective space. So, so I think you, mo most of you know that uh, on the protective steps there are various uh, uh, st standard line bundles. Okay, so then uh, you can apply the formula for the hemisphere partition function and compute it. Contribution from the uh, boundary interaction, which is also called the brain factor. It is T sigma. Yeah, in the Calabria case, the twisted FI, the complex FI parameter is not to renormalize. Gamma of sigma to the n, gamma. 1 minus n sigma. Um, and, and we can keep rewriting it. We can keep rewriting it and uh, let's see. I can give, I could give uh, explicit expressions, but um, I want to explain that uh, there is a sort of nice, well, I if you rewrite it in a certain way, you get a geometric expression, 
which involves a uh, uh, novel concept. So uh, if you keep rewriting it in some way, in some way, then yeah, and uh, this is for large uh, real part of p, so which is okay, two pi psi. So the, the in the large volume limit, uh, this can be written as the ch the churn character of the C for the line bundle times e to the b plus i omega times some characteristic class called the gamma class of the tangent bundle. Now uh, b plus i omega. So in in the convention here, it it is minus t over 2 pi i times e, where e is uh, uh, the pullback of the hyperplane class of the projective space. So it's a generator uh, of the, the second cohomology group. Well, and, and, there, well, and there are, well, I guess I can write. I think I can write like, like, like this. Is. Oh no! Um, mm, 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 mm. Okay, let me. So now uh, 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 I need to explain this uh, gamma hat, this gamma characteristic is gamma hat. So for for a uh, uh, general vector bundle E, gamma hat of E is defined in terms of churn roots. So I assume that okay, uh, you you know uh, characteristic classes. Uh, and uh, and xj are co called uh, churn roots, and uh, churn roots are such that the churn character is given by it, it is sum of it, uh, it is xj. So uh, now this characteristic class defined. So this is the definition. This is uh, called the gamma class. Um, the gamma class was uh, 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 known or uh, invented earlier by math basically mathematicians, people like uh, Hostani, Iritani, uh, Katsarkov, Kontsevich, Pantev, uh, these people. And, uh, yeah, th and their considerations were actually motivated very much by the central charge. The c there's a formula for the central charge uh, obtained by solving the, the Mm, car fix equation. But uh, okay, so what Hori and Romo, so yeah, what Hori and Romo noticed was that uh, hemisphere partition function, the, the, the localization computation of hemisphere partition function naturally gives rise to the gamma function and therefore explains the appearance of the gamma class uh, in the formula for the central charge. So that's uh, nice. Nice story. Okay, uh, any questions? So, if, sorry, if we, if we compare the two formulas, which factor corresponds to which? Like, uh, gamma hat corresponds to the product of gamma function, or? And charm plus corresponds to which part? So, and, and, and dependence only, only comes from the exponent, exponential. So, so this, this is just the, the exponential, I think. Okay. And uh, the remaining part? For example, above there is a minus sign, like a sign, how does it come from the below? Okay. Difference of exponential, so how does it fit into the expression below? Oh, oh, this one? Yes. Yeah, so this can be written as a sign, right? Yes. 
Then, then the sign can be written in terms of gamma functions. Oh, okay, product of gamma. Product of gamma functions. So then, uh, yeah, everything, so yeah, fits here. So the sign comes from the gamma part then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah
Yeah, if, you, if you use uh, Dirichlet boundary condition, of course, we, change the, uh, we need to change the one-loop determinant. So we get a one-over gamma. And, uh, but it, it's actually enough to, in some sense, it's enough to consider Neumann boundary conditions. Because uh, as I said ye yesterday, uh, Dirichlet bond there is a duality between boundary condition. So the Dirichlet boundary condition is a dual to Neumann boundary condition with some boundary inter interactions. Therefore, uh, if you include an uh, appropriate uh, boundary interaction, then, uh, uh, th then you, you can describe um, uh, an arbitrary boundary condition just using Neumann. OK, any other question? OK, very good. Um, now, OK, I want to, oh, I want to say just a little bit about the interface. And uh, j just a little bit, and uh, leave everything else to the exercise. So what I described is um, um, basically a path integral of uh, the hemisphere. But uh, you may want to consider a situation where you have something that divides the space-time into two regions. So for example, the sphere into two hemispheres. So you have an interface here, and you have uh, some theory T1, and you have some theory, some other theory T2. Now you can apply uh, some transformation. You might call it uh, uh, time reversal, or you might also call it a parity transformation. And map it to, to this system, T1 times T2 bar. So now you have a single product theory uh, with some boundary or boundary conditions or whatever. Uh, so so uh, in general, the, the statement is that the interface preserving B type supersymmetry uh, can be described as a B brain in the product theory. Uh, can you come up with an interesting uh, interface in this way? Um, I, I, don't, I don't know if, if you agree, but I think interf um, the identity interface is, is already rather interesting, and uh, it's, it's actually uh, there are some work. And uh, in one of the exercises, actually, which was given yesterday, uh, I ask, ask you to cons consider a matrix factorization for the product theory. Actually, the, the, this is the uh, product, two product of two copies of the gauge theory I just uh, described. And uh, so I, I give you, so I, in, in the exercise, I, I, I give you an example of matrix factorization. And uh, my, yeah, the claim is that if you compute the hemisphere partition function for that interface, then you get precisely the sphere partition function. OK, uh, now I want to finish uh, the uh, two-dimensional story. Uh, any, qu any more questions? OK, now, uh, now I, switch the, I change the topic, and uh, I'm going to discuss uh, 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 half-BPS line operators in four-dimensional N equals two uh, supersymmetric theories. And, uh, and uh, as usual, I give a uh, plan. Uh, for this part of my lecture. So I'm going to uh, discuss line operator charges. Okay. Do I really have time? I probably don't. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, I will probably not be able to you know, cover everything in full detail, but uh, I'm going to discuss line operator charges, uh, 2D4 duration, uh, S4 versus S1 times R3, monop the relation between monopoles and instantons, monopole screening, bubbling, Multiple Python function webs, and so on. And uh, the, as references, I give you, uh, first of all, this one. Uh, this is a review paper I wrote about this subject. And the actual calculations, uh, OK, I, I give 
uh, a paper from 2011. And uh, there is also a, a recent paper by a group at Rutgers. Uh, and this is also quite relevant. OK. So uh, now I want to discuss uh, basically the definition of line operators and also uh, the charges. Uh, line operators are very basic uh, operators in gauge theory because uh, they can be defined for any uh, gauge group, for gauge, any gauge theory. So, so, so let, let G be the gauge group, which is a, a compact D group, and let me denote by T, the script, uh, okay, board, board T, uh, the curtain. Alton subalgebra and uh, T star, okay, dual. Now, uh, I think you know that uh, uh, inside the dual of Cartan uh, sit the weight lattice, and there is a sub lattice which is generated by root. So it's a root lattice, oh, lambda r. Now, um, inside the Cartan subalgebra, uh, there is co-weight lattice, which is defined to be the dual of the root lattice. And there is co-root lattice, which is defined to be the dual of the weight lattice. Now, uh, Half VPS Wilson line operator in four dimensional n equals two theory is defined by the expression trace in representation R of the path ordered exponential of the integral of <coughs> i times the gauge field plus, okay, this, this, this is uh, a, a convention, but uh, the L part of phi, you might, you might put some phase here, if you like, some people do, but, uh, with line element ds, uh, defined by the, uh, by the metric. And the, the integral is taken along for example, a straight line. Straight line or a circle. Uh, yeah, so this restriction is necessary. Uh, and, uh, okay, here I'm, uh, I'm on, for example, R4. And this restriction is necessary to, pre to preserve uh, uh, one half of the uh, full supersymmetry. Um, and it's, a, it's actually an interest, I think, open question. It's an interesting open question to cl classify on which curves you can have a supersymmetric Wilson loops for n equals two theories. For four dimensional n equals four theory, uh, the classification of such curves uh, was done by uh, Dimaski and Piston using the pure spinner formalism. And I think it, it's an interesting question to uh, extend their result to four dimensional n equals two. Okay, um, now this is a, okay, this I take to be an irreducible representation, irrep, uh, specified by the highest, highest weight, W, in lambda W. I think I'm going to have uh, too many Ws, but uh, okay. Um, sometimes I use W for the highest weight, that specifies the Wilson, Wilson operator. And physically, this uh, 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 represents an um, infinitely heavy half BPS electrically charged particle. I mean, I mean the, the world line, world, world line of uh, such a particle. So that's the Wilson loop. 
And uh, now uh, you can con try to consider the magnetic dual of this operator. And so the, so the magnetic dual would be a monopole. And so, so we should consider an infinitely heavy magnetic monopole that you know, propagates along the contour in space time. And that's the uh, Tohuft line operator, which I denote by T of B. So B is the magnetic charge I'm going to uh, discuss, explain. Yeah, so, so this is an infinitely heavy magnetic monopole. And, uh, uh, and this is defined by, by a singular boundary condition. So, so Benin explained uh, last week that uh, in, in quantum phase theory, there are order operators, uh, such as this uh, Wilson line operator, which is, uh, which is, uh, is just a func function or functional of the field in, in, in the path integral. Now, a total line, total line operator is a, a prime example of disorder operator. So it's defined by a singular boundary conditions. And the uh, field strength goes like B over 2 epsilon i j k x i divided by r times d x k which d x l. You might also write it as minus b over 2 times the uh, volume form of a uh, two sphere using the polar coordinates. Yeah, so, yeah, so, so xi uh, and xi and, uh, okay, uh, r, theta, phi. So these are, these are, okay, locally defined. Locally defined uh, Cartesian and polar coordinates. Okay, so, 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 so this, this describes the transverse direction to the, the, to the line or the loop. And the uh, scalar in the vector model space goes like i times b over 2r. Now these expressions are varied for the vanishing topological theta angle. If the uh, theta angle is non-zero, uh, uh, we need to turn on the electric field in order to, uh, I think, in, o in order to be consistent with the Witten effect. Okay. Right. Uh, any question? Okay. But now, uh, there, there are very interesting yeah, so, so I, I'm going to explain uh, in several steps. Uh, uh, very interesting. I think I think, I think it's very interesting story about the charges, about the charges of the line operators. So there is a restriction on the magnetic charge B. Yeah, so there is a direct quantization condition on the magnetic charge B. Uh, to understand this, well, this is a standard thing, so I think you, you, you've heard this several times, probably. Uh, so you consider a monopole, so, so you, we only consider the transverse direction to the, to the line. So then uh, there, is a, there is an S2 that surrounds the monopole, and there is a, a Dirac singularity, well, if you use the gauge such that A goes like minus B over 2 times 1 minus cosine theta times D phi. So the, the Dirac string is around theta equals pi. Okay? And uh, you can uh, parallel transport a magnetic field around, around this uh, Dirac string, and then uh, uh, you require that the field is, or the wave function, to be a single valued. And the condition is that the pairing, the natural pairing between the magnetic charge B, uh, which is in the, in the, okay, co-weight lattice, well, which, which is in the uh, Cartan, 
So the pairing between this B and, uh, and uh, uh, some weight. So this is not the highest weight of the Wilson, but this is, a, this is a, an arbitrary weight for, for of a matter representation. So this is taken from the uh, weight lattice. So the condition says that uh, this the pairing, this pairing is an integer. Yeah, so, so it's important that W depends on the matter content. So, so this is a weight of matter representation or, or, the, or, or a, a root because okay, we always have a gauge fields which transform in the other representation. So uh, there is a restriction on B, and uh, let me call uh, the lattice of such B. Uh, lambda M. So, so, le le so lambda M denotes the lattice of uh, B satisfying uh, this, this condition. OK. okay um, Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the so, so this is the uh, restriction on the charge of the dot operator. Uh, you can also consider dionic line operators. So dionic operators are defined by first uh, considering a dot operator TB, and then inserting a Wilson loop for the unbroken part of the gauge group. So, so once you insert the total operator, uh, this, th there is a choice of B, and uh, this B locally breaks the uh, gauge group to the subgroup. So, the, so, so the, the unbroken part is the uh, commutant okay, of, the, of the magnetic charge B. Uh, yeah, so, So the, the dionic operators are specified. The, the, their, charges are, their charges are given by a pair. In the magnetic lattice times the weight lattice. OK. Uh, uh, uh. But then uh, they are subjected to the, the wild group action. So at the level of the uh, gauge algebra, I mean the D algebra of the gauge group, the line operator charges are classified by lambda m times lambda w divided by the wide group. So this uh, classification is due to, essentially due to Kapustin. Well, he was really considering n equals 4. But, yeah. So, so this is a, a, a classification at the level of the algebra. But there is, a, there is an interesting refinement of this classification, uh, which reflects the global structure of the gauge theory. And uh, in order to understand that, we, we need to consider uh, uh, the. W w we need to consider what happens when you have more than more than one line operator. So consider two line operators. Okay. Two line operators specified by pairs of charges B1, W1, and uh, B2, W2. And imagine that uh, one operator moves around the other so that the surface swept by the moved line operator has a linking number one with the line operator that is sitting. Okay, I'm not sure if I'm explaining it very clearly, but uh, uh, basically this is, a cons the, this is something originally considered by Toulouse. Okay. Uh, no. <laughs> no, no, I, I can draw. Yeah, yeah. So, um, 
I can try. So uh, you, for example, you, uh, you, you can have a sort of consider a line, and uh, you consider the transverse direction, and uh, 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 then in the transverse uh, three-dimensional uh, space, so one operator is represented by by a point, right? And then you can you can consider a line, uh, the, the the other operator that, for example, goes like this, and then you can you can uh, uh, rotate this part to, to to this, and then uh, come back. Uh, I think uh, this represents uh, the motion of one line operator I described. Then um, the claim is that this picks up a face. B basically, uh, Wilson line that goes around the Dirac string uh, picks up a face. Uh, So the condition that this is one, this is one, and when this is satisfied, uh, the two operators are said to be mutually local. So origin originally, to, to introduce two operators to classify uh, possible phases of uh, gate series, and uh, in that context, two uh, was actually not really uh, considering two so was considering uh, mutually non-local operators. Okay, but uh, the, the modern the modern point of view uh, put forward by okay Aharoni, Zyberg, and Tachikawa. The moral point of view is that in order to specify th theory, uh, what we need to choose choose uh, maximal set of mutually local um, line operators. Hmm. So I think this paper is, is uh, of fundamental importance uh, in my personal opinion. And uh, yeah, so the claim is that uh, in order to really specify theory, uh, yeah, you need to choose a maximum set of line operators that obey uh, this uh, constraint. Okay. And uh, they argue that the set has to be maximal uh, in order for, you know, for a modular, in modular invariance of the, the four-dimensional theory to hold. For example, so if you put, put the four-dimensional theory on the four-dimensional torus, and you can describe it using some coordinate, but then uh, you want to choose a different set of coordinate and you do large uh, different morphism, large, gauge co large coordinate transformation. And, and then the, the, the invariance of the description, uh, I mean the lack of gravitational anomaly uh, requires that you choose maximal set of uh, mutually uh, local line operators. That's, the, that's, the cl that's their claim. There are uh, other characterizations of this choice. For example, uh, they, they show that uh, this choice is equivalent to a choice of discrete theta angle. And uh, also, uh, you can rephrase this uh, in terms of the uh, uh, center, in terms of the center of the gauge group. And uh, so the choice is corresponds to a choice of maximal isotropic subgroup of, do I, okay. 
Yeah, so okay, maximal isotropic subgroup of the center of the gauge group times center of G, G star. So there is a uh, uh, yeah, there is a pairing between the center and its dual. So uh, and, and and the, the isotrop isotropy isotropy means uh, this con condition. Uh, okay. Any question? Yes. Yes. Why, 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 sorry? So why the wild grip acts diagonally? I would not even actually. I might expect that choose both E and W in these lattices and watch them allow you to send them. Does that make sense? Um, well, in principle, yeah, why you can choose wild group to act on lambda M and lambda W independently, but uh, I think it's more natural for the wild group to act on both. Um, oh no, also, I, I said that uh, lambda w specified the Wilson loop for the unbroken part. So the choice of the Wilson loop is correlated with the choice of b. So, so it must be simultaneous. Action. Okay, any other question? Good. Okay, I have 20 minutes left. Hmm. Okay, I want to say a little bit about the 2D, 4D ratio. So from Peters, uh, we, had a, we had an explanation of the AGT correspondence. In particular, he explained how the AGT correspondence works, or the, the 2D, 4D relation works for, uh, the, for A1 theory of class S. And uh, OK, I, I will not be very quantitative because I don't have much time. But uh, basically, yeah, so I want to consider uh, so A1, A1 type, so A1 theory of class S. And this corresponds to two M5 brains or uh, six dimensional N equals 0, 0,2 theories on uh, punctured Riemann surface, CGN. So G is a genus, and N is the number of punctures. Hmm. Okay, and uh, you can consider. Uh, so, for example, you c you can have a surface like this. You can yeah. So you can introduce a part decomposition. And then then you get uh, some. Generalized quiver gauge theories with uh, gauge groups SU2. And the punt decomposition, and uh, actually, uh, uh, you also need to draw a uh, uh, trivalent graph. Be but basically, the punt graph uh, uh, gives you, gi gives you uh, some, some uh, gauge theory, uh, Lagrangian description of the uh, quantum field theory. Uh, and for example, change of uh, punt decomposition uh, corresponds to the general duality. That's what Peter uh, explained. Right, and uh, now uh, there is a sort of a, a topological story for the charges of line operators, and the claim is that uh, homotopy class, homo 
would be class of the closed curve. on the Riemann surface uh, corresponds to a charge of a, a half BPS uh, line operator. Yeah, so this correspondence is actually very uh, quantitative, explicit, and uh, also there is, it is known how it's uh, S or modular transformation acts on the on the, the, the parameters of the curve, curves um, called the interstitial parameters. Um, yeah, so the the classification of line operator charges it has a nice uh, correspondence with the uh, uh, classification of closed curves on the Riemann surface. Uh, yeah, so you, you can you can read my review uh, for explicit explanation, and uh, the, the, this correspondence was uh, found by Drucker, Morrison, Mor Morrison, and myself. But then um, after uh, the paper by Afaroni, uh, Zabang, and Tachikawa, uh, Tachikawa had a single author paper. Uh, where he showed that uh, uh, the refinement actually uh, also applies to, to here. And uh, in order to spe specify the, the theory, in order to specify the uh, uh, four dimensional theory, you need to choose. You need to choose uh, mm, well, isotropic. Subgroup. Well, in this case, well, in terms of the Riemann surface uh, of the uh, first cohomology, well, it, well, he was considering the case with no puncture, and uh, the coefficient group is 3g minus 3. So, uh, so there is a correspondence between between line operator charges and line. Uh, Corresponding between line operator charges and uh, closed curves, and uh, the refinement of the classification also goes through. Okay. So this, so this is homotopy, not homology. Here. Uh, yeah, no, the expression above. So this is homotopy. Homotopy. So the the line operator charges that make some algebra, non commutative algebra. Okay. Uh, okay, nice. but, but then you wrote the homology before, so, you know, so. Yeah, so, so this, uh, somehow this has something to do with uh, the center. Uh, and the, yeah, the, and the algebra of line operators, the structure of the, the, the algebra of line operators is more complicated than homology, you know, the topological thing. I, I don't see a direct relation. <laughs> The reference for the the okay. Uh, right. Da, 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 da. Yeah. So 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 so. Okay. So this part, this this part uh, is by uh, this is a uh, paper from two thousand I think nine. Drew Morrison my, myself. Uh, this this part is a single authored paper by Tachikawa. Uh, I think uh, it is soon after the paper with Aharon Zaiba. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have 15 minutes. Okay, so now. Now, because this is a school on localization, I want to say something about localization of line operators, local, localization calculation uh, with line operators, especially Tohufto operators. Now, uh, line operators, half BPS line operators can be placed supersymmetrically, supersymmetrically on S4 
or its deformation S for B, which uh, Peter discussed. Or uh, S1 times S1 times uh, R3. Let's see. So you already know, okay, what S4B is, but okay, so somehow it, it's better to write to have an entity understanding. Uh, you can have two places where you, you uh, you can have two. You have two locations where you can place line operators. So you can have uh, one S one, and you, you can have another S one, which I denote S one B and S one B inverse. So in the one, two, and three, four planes, um, and and uh, you can put loop, loop or, li or line operators. Okay. Uh, and localization has been essentially local, cal localization calculation has been done. So for, for the Wilson loop, uh, the localization was done by okay, uh, Peston, Hama, Hosomichi, and uh, for with the total operator, uh, Gomez, Peston, and myself did the localization calculation for B equals one. And uh, for B not equal to one, uh, there is a guess for what the answer should be based on the AGT correspondence. Uh, so uh, yeah, so to some extent uh, there are results. And uh, now I said uh, you can use AGT for the computation of the uh, expect loop operator expectation values on S4B, right? Uh, and this is because there is a there, there is something called a Varinde operator, Varinde loop operator in CFT. For example, in Dubu and Toda theory. And uh, you can you can use I don't I'm not going to explain what it is but uh, you can use uh, uh, this uh, this gadget to compute the expectation value of uh, line operators. So this was done okay uh, for Dubio this was done by Jurka, uh, Gomez, uh, myself, and Teshner, and also uh, Ardai, Gaiyoto, Gukov, uh, Tachikawa, Varinde, and al also for for, for the Toda theory, uh, this was the calculation was done by Gomez and Leflock. Gomez and Bruno. Okay. Uh, now, so so, so S four S four B is good. S four B it, it can be done. Um, now remember that. Uh, S4, S4B partition function contains an uh, instant of partition function, right? And uh, actually, also, is the anti instant partition function, right? But the instant of partition function was originally defined by Nikita, uh, as we heard uh, this morning, uh, on, on the omega deformed flat space. So, R4, epsilon 1, epsilon 2. Yeah, omega, omega, omega background on R4. And similarly, you can ask, uh, what is the most natural space time to where to compute the expectation value of the line operators? And, the, and the, this, picture, this picture suggests that uh, we should just look at the local neighborhood of each S1 here. And so th then the geometry Locally looks like S1 times R3, but with some twist parameter. So R3 is now twisted around S1. Okay. Uh, yeah, so let, let's see. So then, the, if you compute the line operator or total oper total expectation value on S4B. This contains some contribution from the from the, the, the circles, which I call equators. And uh, 
And th there are some contribution, which would be the analog of the instant on partition function. And I, I call the contribution Z mono. So because, okay, monopole partition function. Okay. So I want to explain briefly how to compute the partition functions associated with uh, monopoles, actually a singular monopole. And the useful trick the useful method is the correspondence between uh, monopoles and instantons. And uh, this correspondence was found by Kronheimer in his master thesis at Oxford. Kronheimer. His master thesis was not available for a long time. And uh, Peston and I uh, kept bugging him. And he, well, he, did, he, and he never replied. But he eventually uh, posted his uh, paper on his web page. So it's available now. Um, Kronheimer's correspondence. So, uh, so, so monopoles are solutions to Bogomolny equations. 3f equals d5, well, phi is uh, an adjoint scalar. Now, instantons are solutions to anti self duality equations, which looks like a okay, script f plus star f equals 0. And Kronheimer uh, showed that instantons on top nut space invariant under under U one action uh, corresponds to uh, uh, solutions to the Bogomolny equation with Dirac singularities, so singular monopoles. Actually, I, I gave details of this correspondence uh, in, again in one of the exercises. So you can, so for equations, you can look at the uh, exercise. I just maybe I just explain what top knot space is. What top knot space is? Yeah. So top knot space. What is top knot space? Actually, uh, multi center top now. Multi center top nut, top nut space. So it, it is a, Kehler, a hyper Kehler manifold uh, which has a metric, I think, Gibbons Hawking form. V uh, inverse times d psi plus omega. So in Kronheimer's convention, psi is an um, angular variable with, with periodicity 2 pi, rather than 4 pi, uh, as in physics. Um, and v is some um, harmonic function R3. And uh, Omega and V actually satisfies 
the Bogomoni equation. Yeah, so this is a uh, um, this is uh, the space with this metric called uh, multi center top knot space. And uh, in one of the exercises, I give you yeah, what the correspondence is, basically, and ask you to show that uh, the Bogomoni equation and the anti safety equations are uh, equivalent for the uh, given expressions. OK. So this is uh, Kronheimer's correspondence. Mm -mm -mm. Now, I don't have much time left, so uh, I'm uh, uh, explaining, explaining these parts just in words. Um, for the instant partition functions, uh, contributions uh, came from small instantons, so, so instantons of zero size. So in the ADHM construction, uh, these instantons uh, correspond to the fixed point uh, of the torus action. OK, this is what we heard uh, this morning. And the same story uh, uh, holds in the, in the multiple case. Namely, uh, we have Dirac singularity. So we have a torque to singularity. And uh, on top of that, we can have smooth uh, particle of torque to monopoles. And these uh, particle of torque to monopoles can uh, get close to the singular monopole and, uh, and, and atta get attached. And eventually, they can, at least pa they can partially screen the, um, the original uh, magnetic charge. So the magnetic charge, I mean B, magnetic charge B can get, get weaker. And I call, yeah, so, so the, the original magnetic charge is B. and uh, there is a screening by uh, smooth particle mon monopoles, and uh, it gets weaker. And uh, the smaller magnetic charge I call V, uh, little v. Now this phenomenon is uh, actually uh, corresponds uh, by uh, Kron Kronheimer's correspondence to the small instantons. So small instantons in top knot they reduce to uh, they uh, descend to uh, monopole. Yeah, so monopole, okay. monopole screening, which also uh, sometimes which is also sometimes called monopole bubbling. Okay, that's the explanation. Uh, now uh, 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 you can then yeah. So then Kronheimer's correspondence uh, can be used to give a description of the monopole moduli space. Because uh, for, for instanton, there is, OK. Uh, for instanton on C2, there is ADHM construction. Now, we are interested in uh, the, the modular space of instanton on top nut. But one can show that uh, in localization calculations, only components, uh, only components with fixed points contribute. And, uh, and uh, uh, Sergei Cherkis showed that uh, the component of monopole, mo the component of instant modular spa space with uh, appropriate fixed points are isomorphic as a complex manifold to the instant modular space on C2. Well, in the case of a single Dirac singularity. So we can actually use the ADH construction for instantons and apply uh, this Kronheimer's correspondence. So we can uh, take uh, uh, invariant part of the AJTM data uh, under this U1. Now, uh, the in the. Sorry, is this different from the norm construction? It, it's different. It's different. different. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, so norm construction you cannot use for this purpose? Uh, uh, so, norm construction is uh, it involves an well, infin infinite dimensional data. So, uh, we, yeah, it, it's not. Yeah, so far, it has not, it's not useful. So, in a recent paper, uh, by Brennan, Day, and Moore, they showed that, uh, that this U1 invariant part of the ADHM instant modular space is actually uh, a, nak a, ku a Nakajima Kuiba variety. And uh, so you can uh, use this description. And uh, as in the discussion of Peters, uh, where uh, 
uh, he used uh, Kuiba super symmetric quantum mechanics to compute the instant partition function. It's, it's again uh, possible to use uh, super symmetric quantum mechanics obtained by uh, uh, d brain construction to compute uh, uh, multiple partition functions. Good, uh, good. Now, uh, <coughs> there are, yeah, I, I was planning to give some general formulas for the e expectation values of line operators, but, but uh, I just want to give one example of the result of localization calculation, which again appears in one of the exercises. So if you consider SU2. If you want, we can give you maybe tomorrow, no, no, on Thursday, maybe half an hour more, so that you can actually do this a little bit better in, in the exercise session, to have shorter exercise session. Uh, somebody asked me about uh, the, uh, the algebra of Wilson and Tuhuft loops, as uh, originally described by Tuhuft. So I want to mention, uh, yeah, I want to comment on that. Yeah, so. Uh, in 1978, in one of the papers in nuclear physics B, uh, to discuss uh, an algebra of Wilson and Tohu to operators, Tohu to loops. And uh, well, the, the, the statement of the, uh, the algebra is as follows. So let's consider uh, uh, Wilson loop in some gauge theory. Well, uh, le okay, let's say uh, in, in an SUN gauge theory and uh, Wilson loop in the fundamental representation. Okay, and, uh, and this is put placed on some curve. Uh, on some curve. And uh, let's consider a two hooked loop. Uh, on some, okay, other curve. And okay, uh, he was, co was considering a non supersymmetric theory. Okay, um, I think it can have some mat matter field. Um, and the definition of Tohut operator uh, was uh, more, okay, somewhat different, but essentially, uh, okay, so I, I, what I explained was a more a modern definition of the operator. Now, um, now we want to consider the following situation. So, so CW and CT are curves, uh, one-dimensional curves. But uh, let's first consider the situation where these curves are hop, hop linked in R3, three-dimensional space, which you can think of it, you which you can think of as uh, a constant time slice, so t at t equals zero. So x1, x2, x3. Hmm. Yeah, so the, uh, no, what is Hopling? Hopling is uh, something like this. And uh, I want to consider uh, the hop link. So hop link uh, uh, in the constant time slice. So this is t, this is time, and uh, this time t equals zero, right? And uh, we consider uh, Wilson loop here and uh, 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 toast operator here. And uh, let's see. Then he claimed, oh, okay, then, then uh, we can consider uh, this uh, uh, small displacement of the curve CW uh, in the uh, uh, positive time direction or uh, negative time direction. So then uh, if you do that, then the Wilson operator and the total operator uh, not in, uh, not on the uh, constant time slice. So then, so there is an ordering, and uh, so now 
the statement is that uh, as, an, as operators acting on the Hilbert space, the Wilson, Wilson loop and the Toft loop uh, obey the following commutation, well, sort of commutation relation. So, th so this is for uh, SU and Gale theory with uh, minimal charges. Hmm. Good. So this actually means that uh, the fundamental Wilson loop and the fundamental Toft loop are not mutually local. So, uh, so, so, so this may look like a contradiction to what I said yesterday, right? Uh, so, so uh, on each, so, so a very fine uh, uh, quantum field theory should have only uh, mutually local uh, line operators, and uh, that so the, the situation to uh, was considering does not correspond to uh, to such operators. So, wha so what what's happening? What's the modern interpretation of uh, his discussion? Uh, so the claim, so so, so so the modern point of view is that uh, 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 W and T uh, obeying this uh, commutation relation. Uh, cannot be uh, both genuine line operators. So, so at least one of them has to be the boundary of a topological surface operator. So I want to explain that. So I've been, I've been saying uh, SU and gauge theory, but it's what I really meant was uh, uh, gauge algebra. The gauge algebra was uh, SU n. And now I want to uh, consider co the concrete situation where the gauge groups really uh, group SU n, so capital SU n. And then, uh, then well, the obviously, well, I think it's obvious. Uh, obviously, the Wilson loop is a very defined line operator, and uh, then the total operator T uh, should be the boundary of a uh, topological surface operator. And how do we actually see, see this? Let's see. So the, the way to see this is uh, to draw, uh, to use, uh, yeah, to draw uh, s some figure here. So, okay, so we have a, to, to operator. Uh, okay, we are going to consider. A to yeah, okay. So, so I said, to operator is fixed at t equals zero, and uh, we want to move uh, Wilson loop uh, to, uh, to the positive time direction or uh, in the uh, negative time direction. And uh, this to operator, uh, so in some gauge, uh, this actually creates creates a <coughs> sh sheet of Dirac strings. So let me see. So you might call it uh, Dirac. So th this this color is probably hard to see. I'm sorry, but uh, so this is Dirac sheet. So so there is some sheet. Now uh, actually, so I, I can even now uh, explain how to get this algebra. So. Uh, the Dirac sheet create so so Dirac sheet uh, is a okay sheet of Dirac string and then when the Wilson loop go around around the Dirac string then you get a phase factor and that's the origin right so if the Wilson loop is uh, let's, let's see the Wilson loop is placed uh, around time earlier than the total loop then uh, there is no phase but if the Wilson loop is placed well after time equals zero then it picks up an extra phase here. So that's how you uh, get this, uh, this, uh, this, this uh, to algebra. And, uh, and you, you also see that the Dirac string, uh, it, it's uh, so in, in some sense a topological object. So because by, by changing the gauge, you can move the location of the Dirac string or Dirac sheet. So, so indeed, uh, in this picture, total to operator is, a, uh, is the boundary of a topological surface operator. So that's good. Um, well, then let's consider another situation. For example, uh, G equals SU n 
mod uh, Zn, Zn, uh, uh, okay. So in this case, uh, 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 in this case, uh, what, what happens is that the, the Wilson loop becomes boundary of a topological okay, surface operator. And okay, and, and I'm restricting to the case where uh, the topological theta angle is zero. Now, okay, how do you see that the Wilson loop is at, uh, the boundary of a topological surface operator? So, so we are in the uh, uh, non supersymmetric situation. So we have the Wilson loop in, so in the fundamental representation. Now, uh, and, and the fundamental representation. Right. So the fundamental representation is not uh, a very defined representation of this gauge group, okay? Uh, because uh, yeah, uh, yeah, because it transforms it transforms under the, this action of the uh, center. Uh, so 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 naively you would think that uh, this object is not allowed, and that I think that's uh, what usually people say, you know, what's written in textbooks. But uh, actually, yeah. Um, but if you think about it. This, this uh, expression makes sense even in the case, uh, yeah, so the, the representation is not, is not a very defined representation of the group because uh, the whole thing is expre expressed just in terms of the, the connection which takes values in the real algebra so, so, and, and you do expansion, right? So, so th there is nothing wrong with this expression in some sense. Uh, and indeed, for example, if you are on R4, uh, if you are on R4 and you consider uh, some, some uh, circle, you can consider such a Wilson loop and it's gauge invariant. Uh, not, nothing wrong with that. But, uh, but when I say this uh, is gauge invariant, the reason it's gauge invariant is that the curve you consider, so CW, this is, uh, so, 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 so if this is contractible, then it's gauge invariant. So, so, it's, so this, the gauge invariant of this operator is actually uh, a background dependent statement. So, so if you, if you uh, in a space time which has non-trivial one, cy one cycle, and if you uh, put the Wilson loop along the non-trivial uh, along, along the one, non -trivial, uh, one cycle, then there is a, a large gauge transformation which transforms uh, this operator. So, so then it, it's, not, uh, it's no longer gauge invariant. So, so you, you see that uh, so in order to define this object in for, for a representation that is not very defined for the group, then uh, you have to you need to specify in, in some sense so how to fill in fill in this uh, yeah so w w of which surface this curve is a boundary. So so in this sense uh, this this Wilson loop is. Uh, uh, is a boundary of a topological soft operator. Okay, does this make sense? Okay, uh, yeah, so, uh, so, 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 so you might have thought that, okay, maybe, to uh, yes? Um, more explicit on the argument that you made about the uh, the representations are not well defined because there are some parts of the represent some representations of the SVN will be sent to the uh, representations of, uh, of the quotient. Uh -huh. uh, okay, uh, so, so the, the question was uh, why is the fundamental representation ill-defined for fu fu yeah, fundamental representation ill-defined for uh, SU and uh, for uh, SU and mod ZN. Okay, so so what is SU and mod ZN? Uh, so so so. So an element of this quotient group is an equivalence class, right? So, so G is an element of SUN, but uh, G is identified with itself multiplied by, by this phase, right? Now, uh, so, 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 um, so consider, consider uh, Okay, so something phi uh, in in the uh, fundamental representation. So so phi transforms 
by g times phi. But, uh, but this is not this is not a very defined this is not a, a very defined representation of S U N mod Z N because uh, the result of the action of the group element. So this is not the same as uh, the the result of the action of, of G. So so uh, so the action of the result of the action of the group element depends on the choice of representative in the equivalence class. So this means that uh, 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 the f yeah the fundamental representation of SUN is not a very defined representation of SUN mod ZN. Uh, am I clear? Okay, very good. Yes. So are you saying so in G plus S U N mod Z N some some Wilson loops should be regarded as topological surface operators? For, for example, like in Hadron Wilson would be okay, but that, that would not be okay. Right. That would just be a general line operator. Yeah. So in the S U N theory, um, some triplets should be regarded as topological surface operators. Yeah. Um, not all. Not all. Right. Uh, but what is the condition? Which one should be regarded as surface operators? Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, so for the, for the, uh, uh. So, so it, it, it had to do with a narrative. So for, for example, for the Wilson loop, uh, uh, yeah, basically, uh, uh, the Wilson loop for the Wilson loop, the, the, the number of boxes in the Young diagram, it gives a, a condition for the loop operator to be very defined. And uh, there should be a corresponding statement for the uh, toyout loop. So, so the toyout loop is specified by B, right? And it's an um, element of the uh, core weight lattice. And then, uh, right, so, so, so for given theory, uh, uh, such a total, oper total operator is a genuine line operator if uh, uh, the charge is uh, in some sub lattice of the co weight lattice. Yeah, so, and, and this sub lattice is. This sub lattice is a uh, 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 no. This sub lattice is picked by the cho choice of the, uh, the global global property of the gauge group. So um, so ye yesterday, the choice of the precise ga gauge theory. Yeah, the, the, the choice of the precise gauge theory was uh, 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 explained in terms of the choice of. Uh, uh, mutually uh, maxima, maximally mutually local line operators, and uh, so so, so uh, in some in that language, it's yeah, the, the the choice of sub is a uh, choice of uh, uh, of the theory. Let's see. Um, uh, uh, and, and there are other characteristics in terms of the dis discrete set angles and so on. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, of, and of course, uh, the, there is direct, uh, direct quantization condition. So uh, the sub lattice has to be inside the uh, magnetic lattice I mentioned yesterday. And but the, 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 but, but the sub lattice is not necessarily the same as uh, magnetic lattice uh, I, I define. Yeah. Um, yeah. So 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 I want to say that uh, yeah. So Tooth was not stupid. Okay. Um, so so I mean what he did was very physical, and uh, uh, what he did was uh, much more important than the mathematical physics we are doing here. Yeah, and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and also on his argument, uh, his result uh, uh, demonstrates that uh, yeah, it's also important to uh, take into account uh, uh, line operators that arise as, so, so non-genuine line operators that arise as the boundary of uh, surface operators. Okay, good. Uh, 
Now I want to uh, uh, come back to uh, yeah, what I was discussing yesterday. And uh, yes, yes, yes. Yes. Ah, so the Dirac string is a. Uh, 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 so, so it's a sheet. So it's a two-dimensional object, right? And uh, in the time, so in the time direction, it uh, goes in the positive time direction, but it, it also has uh, a special component along uh, CT. So, so, so topologically, uh, this Dirac sheet is just a uh, yeah, half line times CT. Yes. Okay, and uh, now yesterday I so so in words actually I covered most of what I wanted to say, and uh, uh, so I think I'd be repeating myself uh, uh, to some extent. Mm. Yeah. Okay. What the. And actually, I don't have too much time anyway. Um, yeah, maybe I, yeah, I, I want to say that. Uh, so yesterday, I, I explained Kronheimer's correspondence. So there's a correspondence between instant on zone top nut invariant under some U1 action and uh, uh, singular monopoles on R3. And, but I, I think I did not really say uh, what this U1 action is. And look, I'm not, uh, again, I'm not uh, gi giving you the complete uh, description uh, now, but uh, uh, I think I should at least say that uh, this U1, which I uh, denote uh, by U1k, acts by shifting the variable psi by a constant. And uh, remember that the, the, the metric of the multi center top nut takes this uh, Gibbons Hawking form. And psi is, is an angular coordinate, is <coughs> pure pair distance to pi. And uh, yeah, so the, the U, U1 action, the relevant U1 action acts on the angular coordinate, coordinate psi, and it also acts on the uh, gauge bundle equivalent. Yeah, good. And then um, yesterday, I did not have time to write down some formulas, which I was planning to write. So um, now I, I, I want to use this occasion to uh, write the formulas. So for the to loop, to loop on uh, S4B, so deformed force sphere. Uh, yeah, so, uh, so this is a guess for B not equal to 1, but uh, for B equals 1, this was shown by uh, uh, Gomez, uh, Peston, and myself. Uh, so this takes the form uh, so th there is an integ the usual integral uh, for the uh, it's for patch of function, and uh, then there is a summation over v. So, so this is a, a screening or a bubbling contribution. So uh, yesterday I explained the rough idea for how 
this comes about. So smooth monopoles get, at get attached to singular monopoles and weaken the uh, singularity. And uh, this is uh, uh, little v is uh, uh, the magnetic charge after such screening uh, occurs. And uh, <coughs> there is a contribution from the from the region uh, from the region uh, in the neighborhood of the, uh, the loop operator and we, we and it lo locally looks like s1 times r3 so uh, i write it in this way and uh, there is contribution uh, uh, that that is an uh, analog for monopoles of the instant partition function and then there is the usual Uh, sphere uh, one loop part and the instant partition function most squared. So, so on the deformed four sphere, uh, this uh, okay. This is a form of the uh, uh, expectation value of the torque operator. Um, now, I also want to give a formula for S one times R three. And uh, there is actually uh, omega deform sort of omega deformation parameter on S1 times 3 because uh, R3 is fibered over S1. <coughs> so, so when you go around S1, uh, there is some special rotation along the uh, third axis. Now, uh, this can be written as, as a supersymmetric trace in some Hilbert space. So, yeah, maybe I should uh, have emphasized this uh, also. Um, line operator, which is inserted uh, uh, in the time along, along the time direction, uh, so, so that, that is different from Toot's to case. To for to to loop operators were p p uh, in the spatial direction, but now I'm considering a line operator along the time direction, which is this one. Uh, so, so, so line operator, such a line operator modifies the Hilbert space. Okay. So it's not an oper operate line operator in that situation is not an operator that acts on the Hilbert space, but it rather changes the Hilbert space. And uh, and uh, we take the trace there, and uh, 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 so so the path integral we are considering can be. Uh, uh, interpreted as a supersymmetric trace. So here, H is the Hamiltonian, R, uh, uh, R is the radius of the circle. Uh, lambda is some, oh, lambda is basically the omega deformation parameter. J3 is a uh, uh, rotation. Operator I3 is the, the SU2R rotation operator, and uh, capital F sub F is a uh, um, flavor generator, and M sub F is then the, the fugas. Now, this, if you do localization on S1 times R3, what you find uh, is the following structure. So again, there is the same sum uh, uh, that. Uh, that take account, that take into account the uh, screening or bubbling contributions, and uh, there's two pi i v b. Yeah, there's some pairing. Oh, I don't. Okay. And okay, and, and this b, this b e, uh, depends on one of the uh, uh, real scalars in the vector multiplet, and also. Uh, it contains uh, uh, basically the grad photon, so the, the dual of the uh, gauge field, uh, the three dimensional gauge field. And then there is a uh, one loop part, okay, times uh, the monopole partition function part. Okay, so what I, okay, maybe I, it's not terribly important, but okay, I can. The I, I give the parameter dependence. Uh, 
Yeah, so it looks like this. So in particular, OK, so capital B enters here, but not here. And, 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 and little a is a combination of one of uh, the other uh, real scalar in the vector multiplet. And, and uh, the Wilson, Wilson line, so I mean the holonomy along this one. But in your first formula, you multiply one of these formula to five. No, it's not over counting. Uh, so for example, if you use the, the equivalent index theorem, the one look determinant uh, receive contributions from from uh, specific locations on S S four B, so uh, yeah, so so S four B one loop uh, determinant uh, receive contribution from the north and the south poles, okay. and uh, yeah, S one times R three one loop determinant receive contribution from the well sort of the equator or, uh, or the location of the loop operator. So the equator contribution does it appear on the second line? It's a ah, so, so, so you mean, yeah, so basically, this is the same. Yeah, so, so, yeah, the, the, yeah, thank you. So the point is that uh, these, these quantities appear uh, on S1 times R3 with some, okay, with, uh, with, some, with arguments shifted. Yeah, and uh, I, I gave one, okay, a couple of examples, concrete examples, I think yesterday. Right, and uh, it, they are also in the exercise, and uh, and uh, yeah, you, you can also compute the Moyal product. Okay, maybe I should say, okay, you get the Moyal product because uh, these line operators uh, realize deformation quantization of the Hitchin moduli space, and uh, there is an interesting story uh, when you dimensionally reduce to three dimensions. Okay, thank you.